Hi, Sally Hancock here, and I am going to make a glitter tumbler. Um, I got this Swell water bottle, and it already is pretty, but I want it sparkly. So I am following a tutorial that Jennifer Maker did on her YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link to that below. So first thing, I have washed the bottle, and then I need to tape tape off the top so that I don't get glitter and glue and epoxy and all that in my water bottle. So I think I'm going to follow right along this lip here. I want to be careful not to get it above or else my lid might not fit on. Okay, and then I will fold this in so it will be easy to grab the end. And I will tuck it over the edge here. Like that. And I'm going to glitter the bottom so I'm not going to tape that. Although that would look pretty to leave open, but that's okay. I'm going to glitter the whole thing. So the first thing I need to do is rub it with some rubbing alcohol. This is just to make sure that any of the oils from your hands or anything all is off. So we want the glitter to stick really good. Um, you could spray paint your bottle before you start, but I'm going to do purple glitter and so I'm okay with any of these colors coming through. Oh my goodness, that is really strong alcohol. Oh wow, oh. okay, oh. okay, I'm going to open a window and be right back. Alright, so to adhere the glitter, I am going to use this Krylon's all-purpose spray adhesive and so I'm just going to spray it all over. I have a box to spray it in so it doesn't go everywhere and then I'll do that and be right back. Okay, so I just went outside to spray my bottle. Ugh. Gosh, I don't want to set it down now. I should have thought of this. Maybe I could... That. Shoot. Oh, I hope the glitter will stick right there now. Okay. So I am going to do an ombre of light and dark glitter. And so I'm going to start with the dark. Woo! Everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to. Let's see. So she said to do it about an inch, strip all the way around. Maybe if I set it down on the glitter, kill two birds with one stone. Okay, and then tilt it. And pour it right on where the where you did the glitter the first time. It'll kind of pour down. Now I need to get a cup and pour this off. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my cup. And I'll just pour this glitter right in that cup. And now I will go to the top. Better put a lid on that. Don't want that to spill everywhere. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so hold it level.
Now you just mix the two together, the two colors, in your cup. And you stir them together, mix them together, and then do the mixed in the middle. It's looking pretty good. The top part, obviously, looks a little not as good because there's the teal showing through, but I would really like more of the dark, more of a, less of a line and more of a combining. So I think I'm going to spray it with another coat of glue and then do some more glitter. So, I will do that. I will spray this with glue and be right back. Okay, I have got my tumbler glued. So, I am going to do this again. see I can still kind of see the teal through so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a third coat I'll be right back kind of tap that off a little bit there I can't really see any more of the teal except of course up here which I'm okay with I think I am done with the glitter. Okay, so I am just gonna kinda maybe brush off just lightly. Extra glitter here. Okay, now I am going to seal it with this Min Wax Polycrylic Protective Finish Clear Satin and to, you know, keep the glitter sealed in there. So I'm going to go outside and do that and be right back. Okay, so now I have the sealer on and, uh, shoot, I do not know how to put this down. I think I'll just set it in the glitter like that and let it dry for 30 minutes. And while that is drying, I'm going to make something to spin it with while the epoxy is curing. So I found this skinny tube and I thought, I tried to think of something to stick in the top that would be kind of squishy to hold it still. So I'm gonna use an old plastic bag. Just kind of tape this whole thing together. So the next part to my little contraption is the box. So I was at Dollar Tree and hmm, Let's see if I can get this in here tonight. They have these boxes for these stretched canvases, and I thought, oh, this would be a really good width 
and I could put this through and then I got a uh, an aluminum pan to catch the drips to put on this side over here under the tumbler so I'm gonna cut the holes and I'll be right back all right now I've got my holes cut so my little tube can fit right there and I should be able to put my my uh, tumbler, well my water bottle right here and then I'll have this pan under it to catch the drips from the epoxy. So I just need to wait for my um, water bottle to dry for about well, Jennifer said she waited for hers for 30 minutes, and so when it's dry, I'll be right back. Okay, I am ready to epoxy my tumblers, and I got this amazing clear cast epoxy resin from my sister, and she had used um, most of the little measuring cups. So what I am doing is I filled it to one ounce, because it said on the box that if you do less than an ounce, then the mixing might not work, right? So I filled the little cup to an ounce, and then I'm pouring one ounce of water into these cups, and then I'm gonna mark on the side where one ounce is, and that way I can make sure that they are the same. Okay, so now I'll pour that water out and dry the cups and then mix my resin. I'll be right back. So, I guess you stir each one separately. Just stir it slowly so you don't get bubbles, but I think it's too late because I already got like a million bubbles in there. So I will dump that into a, well, not silly, I don't need another cup, I can just... Just pour this one into there. that up. Pour that one in there. Oh, I think this is way more than I need. Now this said uh, to stir it for three minutes, I think. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah, two to three minutes until it says absolutely no swirls are seen. Scrape sides and bottom thoroughly. Okay, so I see some swirls in there. I don't really see any swirls or cloudiness. There's a lot of bubbles. Hopefully that will go away. So it did say that if you let it sit for three minutes, then the bubbles can go to the side. Um, and then you or the bubbles will rise to the surface and then you can move them to the side to pop them. But where I'm using my, gonna use my fingers, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, let me get 
this behind camera here. I'm gonna adjust my camera. Just a there we go. Okay, so I am going to just start pouring this on. Let's see, I wanna keep my left hand free so I can use it to turn my tumbler thing. Just keep turning it. And then after 30 minutes, I need to take the tape off around from the top of my bottle. All right, so I have let my bottle cure overnight. There's still a few spots that are a little tacky, especially the bottom, because I think there just was a lot of epoxy that I put on there. And maybe there was a few spots, but it is good to sand now, so I'm just going to tape around the rim again. Okay, so she, Jennifer used 600 grit paper, sandpaper. I only have 220, so I'm just going to sand really lightly. So let's get, oh, forgot to get my alcohol, be right back. Okay, so just um, wipe your bottle with alcohol to get all the dust off. So now time to put on my decal. So I designed this decal with some fun um, things that I like. I put a dolphin in the S and I made a Star Trek badge for the A, a Harry Potter wand, a lightsaber for the two L's, and then the white tree of Gondor to represent a Y. Kind of looks like a Y. Anyway, those are all things that I really like. So I'm going to just put that on here. Okay, so I just used Oracle 651. Cut it out. Oops, there's a part of my little lightsaber. This little tree. There we go. Okay, it worked. Okay, so just kind of place it in the center first. And then push it down. But that still feels sticky. I think I might have put too much epoxy on yesterday. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Not sure how well that tree represents the Y, but that's okay. I think it looks good enough. All right, so I had issues with my box and my little handle that I'd made. So what I ended up doing was just taking off the tape and everything and just, well, at first I just held it upside down to let it cure at first and then I just went ahead and took all the tape and everything off and then it was a little bit crooked on there, but uh, I think maybe this time if I prop up my box like this, then it will um, be level. So I'm going to stick this in my box. Oops, let me scoop that for 
board so you can see. And put some newspapers under the one side. Hopefully it won't make it tippy. So I mixed up way too much epoxy last time, so I don't want to waste it this time. So I'm going to go with uh, 15 milliliters. So I've already marked my two cups and I'll set that in here to pour. Let me get my gloves on. Okay, last time I got so messy. So I put on two pairs of gloves, so if I need to I can just take um, one pair off and still be protected. All right, that looks good. I don't see any streaks or cloudiness in it. So now just repeat just as you put on the first coat. I'll just keep on turning and in 30 minutes I will take off my tape. So hopefully this will work even though it's kind of at an angle. Okay, I think I can stop doing that. So I'll just keep turning and come back in 30 minutes. All right, it has been 30 minutes, so now I will take off the tape from around the neck. Okay, and then looks like I got some um, resin on the neck here. So I'm going to take uh, some alcohol here and just clean that up. So now I'll just need to keep turning this and then I think after a little while I can just turn it every once in a while. But it'll need to turn kind of for at least five hours. And so when that is done, I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's all finished. I just wanted to come back on to say that if you do leave it and it starts to kind of drip and run, just as you spin it, it will eventually even back out. So I have been turning this almost nonstop for over an hour and it's still really clobbing. So I've been stopping a little bit here and there, but then it gets dripped. So yeah, I guess the first part you really need to keep turning it. But I just wanted to let you know that if it does drip and get a big drip, if you just turn it, it will eventually even itself out. You don't need to you know, get a popsicle stick or something to try to smooth it. It will just smooth by itself. So I'll just keep on spinning. Okay, so it is all cured. It has been about a day and a half and it feels really smooth and really good. Um, not tacky at all. 
and it is super sparkly. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it is very sparkly. And so I really like it. Um, it was a challenging project for me. It was a lot of work and messy and <laughs> took a long time. So if you know, you're okay with that, then I say go for it. I think if I did it again, I would not use my little homemade contraption that I did, but would um, get something uh, to spin it automatically because, well, first thing I tried, um, it kept slipping off. And so I ended up, what I ended up doing was just kind of holding it like this and just letting it drip down because I'd seen a hang method for the um, letting it cure. But the next time I just left it on here and I literally had to spin it for at least an hour constantly. And that got kind of tiresome. And so I think if I did another one, I would figure out some way to have like a barbecue rotisserie thing or wait for a good coupon to buy the American Craft Spinner at Michael's. Um, but I don't know that I'll make another one. So we'll see. And so that is my take on this kind of project. Um, I like how it turned out, but it was, it was a challenge to get it there. So anyway, thank you so much for watching.